you are here before me. I'm so very sorry. Uh, I hit the borrow a car. It's such a nuisance not having one of my own. It's a pity that your forebears didn't have uh, an idea about the fact that royalty would have to work for a living. Hasn't anyone received you? Oh, yes. Unin is here. It's when I meet a man like that that I understand why the revolution happened. You hate him for having been Kerensky's satellite. There are plenty who made that mistake, but the Bunin of 1917 and Bunin of today are two different men. You think people change? You are so naive. My husband always said, if you want to change a man, start with his grandfather. <laughs> well, in any case, do not quarrel with the dinner if you don't like the cook. Does Anastasia know you're here? I believe the lady has been notified. No, I beg you, please, do not make up your mind until we have met her. They have gone out of their way to get my back up. Look at these folders. Yes, I agree. It's overdone, but please. If your Anastasia were genuine, she'd revolt against it. Do try to keep an open mind. You are so gullible, Paul. You always were. You had reached your teens before you stopped believing in Santa Claus. I'm not as easy as you think. The first time I came here, I was in no mood of eager expectancy. I was all ready to expose and denounce. I'd heard of Bunin in the company and thought the whole thing was a disastrous fraud. And then came your conversion from prosecutor to disciple, quite in the manner of that other Paul, the sainted one. I was at the point of leaving. I'd been shown in here, and while I was waiting, I remembered my last time at Sarsky cell. I kissed them all goodbye. I was going to war, and the Emperor walked with me to the door. We passed the Marble Parade Hall, the Hall of Catherine II, and the Portrait Gallery, the Black Cossacks Hall, and behind us, everything entered into shadow. And I thought that it was there, among those shadows, that they should remain, in their fairy palace, with the black eagles, and mighty ancestors staring down from the walls. But then Anastasia walked into the room. I did not recognize her immediately. I had not made allowance for the years of all she had been through. She answered all your questions, I suppose. What do you expect? Bunin has taught her her lessons. Bunin does not know everything. But there are many sources he can draw upon here in Berlin. Old friends, old servants. Ghosts of our royal past? It isn't what she knows. It isn't the evidence of her wounds. I told you about those now. It's, it's more an atmosphere. She creates a, a quiet assurance, a, a fineness that you believe is above question. It sounds as if you've fallen in love with her. I think perhaps I might have. You're quite mad. But I suppose it is only to be expected. Your mother... Poor Eudoxia, when your father died, wanted to marry the Pope. She was always religiously inclined. So, you have fallen in love with this sleeping beauty. Shouldn't I have? Don't forget, we were supposed to be husband and wife. Why, we even went through a ceremony of our own device. The uh, child betrothal. She was 12 and I was 14. It took place on the Chinese island. Does she recollect it all so clearly? She hasn't mentioned anything about it. It seems to be one of her blank spots. She doesn't remember a thing like that, and yet you still believe in her? Preposterous! I've spoken to doctors, to Lessing for one. There is no greater authority. He says some kind of amnesia is almost inevitable. The, the head wound was a serious one. The Bunin says that the poor dear one often has complete lapses. Bunin! The girl means nothing to him or his friends. She is simply a means of getting their hands on the millions my son deposited in foreign banks. To buy munitions that came too late. As usual. The Tsar was like a man riding backwards in a train who never saw anything until he was past it. Perhaps we should give some thought to those millions. Money means power, and uh, someday a crisis may arise in Russia, and they will want us back. <laughs> the Romanovs? Don't delude yourself. 
the ants are in power. The red ants. Someday there may be ants of another color, but they will always be ants. Ants may be crushed. You think so? Once, I went with my husband to Samar, and we saw an ant army on the march. It was terrifying. Animals screaming from the desert, covered with the creatures, dying as they ran. The men dug trenches, my husband told me. He was like that. And they flooded the trenches with water, but the ants never stopped. They flung themselves in, millions upon millions. And their floating carcasses were made as a bridge for the hordes that followed. Alexander said, a Tsar should not run from an army of ants. But we ran. We scrambled aboard our train and we fled. And I learned then that we live in a world where numbers must be respected. Perhaps you're right. But the blood of those poor murdered innocents cries out for justice. Those sweet girls, that little boy. Leave them. Leave them. Rob them the dignity of death. Anastasia, are you feeling better? Yes, thank you. My cold is almost gone. Dressed like this, you bring the past alive. But this is your grandmother's moment. Have courage.